guys, my name is Brianna and this is my 28 week pregnancy update. We've made it to the third trimester. I am so excited. It means we're so much closer to meeting Presley and I just can't wait. So let's dive into this update because there's been a bunch of things going on and since this is officially kicking off the third trimester, I wanna give you an update on just so much that's been going on so far. So how far along? 28 weeks and a day. Baby is the size of a tropical coconut according to one of my apps, which feels like that's smaller unless maybe tropical coconuts are larger than some of the other fruits or vegetables it's been saying she's been lately. I think she's been the size of cauliflower or a head of lettuce and so a coconut seems a little bit smaller. But long story short, she's likely 15 inches and about two and a half to three pounds in there. And she totally feels like she's at least three pounds at this point. I was even talking to my doctor at my appointment this week of how heavy this baby feels and just sharing some of my concerns. I feel like I've had a lot of overwhelming kind of concerns this last couple of weeks about some stuff. More on that later though. Anyways, my doctor told me it is totally normal for a second pregnancy or any pregnancies after your first to feel like the baby is a lot larger because that first baby ruins your pelvic floor muscles, I guess. So everything feels a lot heavier in your abdomen. So I enjoyed and appreciated learning that fact because I always like to know why these things are the case. And so she said, it totally makes sense. You feel that this baby is a lot heavier than Landon was in your first pregnancy because Landon destroyed your abdominal and pelvic floor muscles. Thanks kiddo. Total weight gain, I am 140 pounds. I think that's what I was last week, which puts me at 18 pounds gained so far this pregnancy. I started at 122 pounds. Maternity clothes are a must. This is a Jessica Simpson maternity top. It's probably one of my favorite maternity tops. I actually got it just for this pregnancy. The pink girly <laughs> color and look just really inspired me. So I had to get this top for sure. And you'll see in the belly shot, I'm wearing maternity jeans as well. Stretch marks, lucky to have no stretch marks yet. Even though my skin has been really itchy, so very liberal with the Palmer's cocoa butter and just applying lotion like crazy because trying to prevent them at all costs if I can. How are you sleeping? Horribly. <laughs> Gosh, it was awful last night. I had to prop the pillows up to literally be like sleeping. I felt like a mummy almost. I guess mummies sleep like this. But I was just like, <laughs> I had my arms out to keep myself positioned upright on the pillows that I sort of set up because my heartburn was so bad. And I probably did to myself because I ate buffalo wings for dinner and I ate way too much. I even said to my husband, I feel like I have a bowling ball of food next to the baby in me because of how much we ate. They were so good. But my heartburn was so horrible. I mean, almost every hour at least, if I could guess, I was up because of the heartburn, re-propping myself up, trying to literally sleep in an upright position. Best moment this week. So we had Valentine's Day on Tuesday and that was also when I had my doctor's appointment and I scheduled them for first thing in the morning so before I start working, get in my appointment. And I think hearing her heartbeat to sort of kick off my Valentine's Day was just really, really special. And for some reason, you know, you think Valentine's Day and love and hearts. And so hearing Presley's heartbeat was a really nice Valentine's Day present. Missing anything. I mean, I'm obviously going to be so excited when I can have my first sip of champagne or my glass of red wine after she comes. I'm definitely looking forward to that. We've been having some really nice weather, so it's like 65 degrees here in Cleveland, which is so not normal for February. But I am looking forward to summer and sitting out on our patio deck in our backyard and having you know, a nice summer cocktail will be exciting. My belly button is out. My wedding rings are still on. Movement. This girl is moving around like crazy and in a lot of the apps it actually says that at this point baby is basically getting ready or has turned to be head down ready to go position which is pretty crazy considering that there's still you know 11 weeks left 
or a little over 11 weeks if she truly goes to 40 weeks. Um, that is something my doctor talked to me about along with some other stuff that's just giving me a lot of anxiety. But the fact that baby is already getting prepared to get into that labor position is just crazy and exciting. But I feel her kicking, moving. Adam's felt her kick at this point, which is really cool. And a couple of my friends have as well which she's like you know active during the times that I'm with them and we've tried to you know put Landon's hand he's just such a wiggly toddler though almost two years old that he can't hold his hand there for too too long but I would suspect he's probably felt something because I've been pretty good at like okay put your hand right now if she's moving so love feeling her move I think that's one of the coolest and most special experiences while pregnant Food cravings. <laughs> I always have food cravings. I was actually talking to another girlfriend who's pregnant right now too, and she's like, I just don't really feel like I have food cravings. And I'm like, girl, I'll, I got you covered there then, because I have them all the time. Every day I'm craving something. But this week, the ones I've written down were tacos. I really, really wanted tacos. And one got Taco Bell. Bananas and peanut butter. I think I've had bananas and peanut butter every day this week. Like I'm out of bananas today and it's making me really sad. I need to go to the grocery store and get more bananas for my peanut butter. <laughs> and steak. I wanted red meat so bad. I actually had steak on a salad for lunch today and it just tasted so good. So a lot of, I guess, high protein sort of food, which makes sense because baby is just at this point trying to pack on weight according to my app. She could be gaining about half a pound almost every week, I think starting around like 30 weeks moving forward. So she's definitely probably preparing to be packing on those LBs before her arrival. Cole, you stink. <sighs> well, that's one of the questions. Anything making you queasy or sick? Um, when your dog comes into the room and passes gas that smells absolutely disgusting. Well, you seriously smell like rotten garbage right now. I love you and you're so cute, but that's just foul. <sighs> Labor signs. I have been experiencing more Braxton Hicks this past week. I felt like I would felt some and then they dissipated. I definitely have felt them again this week, in particular when I'm active or been like moving some stuff around. I was taking down all the Valentine's Day decorations and getting out Easter decorations and I definitely have felt in going up and down the stairs like a, just a really tightening of my tummy even more than it normally feels like. So leads me to believe having some Braxton Hicks. As far as other symptoms go though, I've been having crazy dreams, like some of the most vivid, even telling my husband about them, I'm like they're emotionally gut-wrenching dreams of either really scary things that happened to my kids or just really a lot of like conflict kind of dreams or really negative interactions in my dreams that like when I wake up my like heart is pounding, I feel really bad, they just feel so vivid and real. I mentioned the heartburn <laughs> in the sleep, it is god awful. And I mentioned in the stretch marks my skin just has felt really itchy. On top of that I do feel again like I felt the letdown sensation or those tingly boobs and I noticed in my bra the one day it did look like I must have leaked a little bit so they say though on my app this is totally normal that you can start producing colostrum early in your pregnancy in particular if you did you know nurse and this is a second pregnancy so all these things I'm learning about that I guess in your second pregnancy can either happen early or just sort of happen differently because it's your second pregnancy and your body's just more used to or is accustomed to going through these things. I think that's what leads me to my final sort of symptom. It's just having some pregnancy anxiety. When I mentioned this a bit, I think overall in pregnancy you have more anxiety or concerns about different things. I think this past week though, and it kind of ties into the question too of happy or moody. I mean, I'm still very a happy person and in general relatively happy, but I think this week I've just sort of had reality sink in of you're in the third trimester and labor is imminent at this point and it's just closer and closer to it. But my doctor at my appointment, I think she was just trying to be really nice, but it is kind of scary. And I think after hearing this on Tuesday, it made like the next couple of days me just be a little more emotional or 
have more anxiety around this that because this is my second baby she said how long again was your labor with Landon and I said you know 12 hours but because of ending up getting the epidural which wasn't planned I wanted to have him completely naturally um, but just had like a really bad experience and getting sent home from the hospital and by the time I came back was at seven to eight centimeters and just went through <laughs> a lot of being sent home and then coming back at that state so quickly, like within two hours of time. Um, <laughs> and didn't know my water had been broken at home and I was vomiting and just, it, it was a hot mess. <laughs> my labor story with Landon, it ultimately turned out perfect, but I just, at that point was, in my head so mentally exhausted and then on the physical side so exhausted because of everything that was going on during labor I was just like give me the epidural but my doctor was saying if your labor with Landon was 12 hours and that was because I slept for about three hours once I got the epidural and woke up at 10 centimeters ready to push she said be prepared labors generally are cut in half when you're having babies especially under you know two years apart um, which will be right around two years. But she said, be prepared for you know a six hour labor. So she's like, I always try to just, you know, you won't spend as much time at home likely as you did with your first labor. So hearing that, she was like, yeah, you might get the natural labor you wanted the first time. <laughs> which this time around, I'm still really trying to think about what, you know, if I could plan my birth, which is part of one of the things like, well, you know, is it really even necessary to make a birth plan? And I think, Yes, I'm still going to make one so that I know, Adam knows, and I can share it with my doctor and we can all be on the same page of what the ideal scenario would be. But I feel like this time I'm just like, yeah, I'll do the epidural and have that nice experience. I felt like then the actual pushing of Landon and when he came out was just such a dreamlike experience <laughs> because of the epidural that I am a little scared to think about this all could happen really fast and have a natural labor so I don't know we'll see but I think that's why I've just had some extra anxiety or been extra moody or on edge this week because I know all this is coming and it is one thing that you just can't control and I am a person who is really OCD and likes to be in control and likes to have a plan and likes to have everything the way I want it and this is just one of those things that it's you know nature's course nature's going to decide ultimately how she comes when she comes all of that and that can just lead you to feel a little bit uneasy i also feel like knowing i'm in the third trimester i need to start making my maternity plan for when i'm gone at work and my professional life is a huge part of who i am and my identity and i think you always have the fears in the back of your mind too of I'm going to be gone for three months. I'm going to miss things at work. And what does that also mean for my long-term professional trajectory and just my outcomes in the job that I do? That all can just feel really scary. So I think that's why I've just had some extra anxiety or moodiness this week because when you hit the third trimester, you just know it's so close to having this little one and it's so exciting in so many ways. and. I know everything coming up and I think that's what I'm really looking forward to is my sprinkles going to be in two weeks and I can't wait to see my friends and celebrate this little girl at that sprinkle party. So yeah, there's many more things that I know I can be really positive about and I'm going to be packing my hospital bag over the next couple of weeks and I'll be finalizing the nursery over the next couple of weeks. So, so many things to look forward to and I'm very, very blessed. but. Nonetheless, you have anxiety and stress during pregnancy for things too. And something that's been on my brain a lot since this is my second pregnancy and having this little boy that I'm so in love with, he is my world, like life revolves around Landon for the most part in our house. And this is where I'm seeking all of your advice. What do you do to adjust to having two babies? And what are some of the strategies or tips that you have to get your first baby ready for the second baby. I've heard some things here and there and it's something my doctor encouraged me to get some reading materials and read up on. But my doctor also said to me, from your child's perspective, imagine your husband brought home an 18 year old girl and said, she's gonna live with us now and you have to love her and 
treat her really nicely and I'm gonna split my time between the two of you. Like, how would that make you feel? And when she said it that way, I'm like, so what am I supposed to do <laughs> for my son? I know how much time it's going to be nursing this little girl because I plan on breastfeeding. To me, it was such a great bonding experience with my son that I 100% want to breastfeed this little girl as well. I want to breastfeed every child that I have. It was so important to my bonding with them and feeling like I was taking care of my baby essentially and getting them started off on the right foot for that you know, 15 months is how long I went with Landon beyond pregnancy that I was doing everything I could to give him the best nutrition from my body, right? So knowing I plan on breastfeeding, knowing the time it takes to have a newborn, but then knowing that there's this little boy who is used to just being me. Like he is such a mama's boy. I'm so attached to him. I don't want to give up the routines and the time that I have with him. And I just, I don't know how to make this happen and also be fair to the new baby and give her everything that I was able to give Landon. So, any advice or tips that you have on how to make this transition go smoothly, I would greatly appreciate it because I think that is the biggest piece of anxiety. Honestly, that's bigger than labor at this point for me that I'm stressed out about is how I make everything okay for Landon. This is the belly from the front. From the side. Sorry, my lighting seems funny. <laughs> and from this side. Okay, well I feel like this pregnancy update has been quite a mix of the fun, normal questions I go through and just a lot of anxiety that I'm having, but want to be real with you guys and truly talk about just what's on my brain and what this last week of pregnancy has been like. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, I would love to have you subscribe. I'll be doing pregnancy updates through the end of this pregnancy and do a ton of mommy and lifestyle videos on my channel. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in my next video.